welcome uh, dear viewers and listeners who have been uh, uh, following along that which we are trying to, to present. Uh, this is the sixth day. We've been going through the series of testimonials and uh, healing, and uh, we've been we've been blessed uh, of many things that God has given in the work of medical missionary work. Now, I invite us again to <clears throat> today's class and the last class, and we will be going through the, uh, the gut-related diseases because in the field, these are the common conditions that we find. Some are complicated, some are are very easy to deal with. Some requires faith, faith. Some requires a serious determination to ensure that uh, the condition is eliminated. So I want to pray and then I get into this discussion and the, this uh, study. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this time that we may come back to learn about our health and how we can be able to keep the body in good, right condition. So let your knowledge, your wisdom be upon us and also give us intelligence and knowledge and skill to go and help people who are suffering. This uh, is a humble prayer, trust me, living in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, yeah, so, we understand that in the beginning, God created man in his image and his likeness. And that image and likeness was, to be, uh, was in physical, mental, and spiritual um, faculties. And man was to continue to develop until he reached the full stature of knowledge that Christ himself came to demonstrate when he came here in this world. Instead, man become, became deprived of growth in mental faculties. And so when he seen that image was marred and continually it is being marred with the diseases and the afflictions that we have this day. If we read in the testimonies, Ministry of Healing page 365 and uh, paragraph three says that uh, if the more nearly we come to the, uh, to the original plan that God gave unto man in the beginning, the more we shall have the health of the body, we'll have peace and life. This is only gotten when obedience to the laws of health, following the principles of life that God had given in the beginning. So today uh, we are going to discuss they erase various uh, diseases that uh, are, are there. Um, let me see you know, on that. Yes, I'm, I'm going, this is a very huge study and uh, there's about 695 slides of these diseases. And uh, what I'm always trying is to look at the possibilities of what we have in our environment and uh, making use of them and thinking. Sometimes some of these remedies just come as a flash in the, in the brain or in your mind. And they only come when you have studied and understood the principles of life, as well as the anatomy and physiology, how each organ operates and uh, the, various, uh, uh, the, the various ways in which they interact with other organs. That is the best model to understand the body and its physiology. And uh, for you to understand the pathological part, uh, how the body uh, system actually works and uh, it it's affects other, orga, orga, other organs, uh, you must be ready to study and experiment. 
we understand that in the Bible, these are diseases that are <clears throat> also mentioned. More so we have been reading Deuteronomy chapter 28, where we found very, uh, almost all diseases are listed there. And uh, also, if you read second, I think uh, second uh, Kings or first Kings says about King uh, Uzziah when he was stuck on his foot, there was a wound that could not heal. And the same uh, in the book of, uh, I think Isaiah 18, 22 speaks about why is your wound incurable? Why is it incurable? And we are told that go into Gilead for you to get the medicine. In Gilead is a place where we get the natural remedies that God gave unto man. So the only safety for man is to follow strictly the plan that God gave in the beginning. Now let's just go to these diseases that are uh, uh, diseases of the gas intestinal uh, tract. Uh, and uh, that is the organ, the GIT is the organ that uh, actually, uh, this organ is very important. The gut system from the mouth to the anal tract is linked to second brain as an example, uh, or it is, the way it, it is structured is uh, it's a anatom anatomical structure mimics or is a kind to how the brain is wired. And that is why it is also known as second brain. So your colon, if it is affected, your brain is affected. And when your brain is affected, it hampers the function of other organs. It is also the system that keep uh, our body systems in function or in good tandem because uh, the food that we take is what is broken into amino acids, what is broken into glucose, what is broken into vitamins and minerals. And that is what builds the cells, builds the tissues, build the organs, and then we have the organ system. So if we understand that relationship, and we know that the gut system from the mouth to the anal area contain a lot of bio, uh, a lot of uh, uh, biomass, I can call it so, a biota or biotic fa factor, some life in it that makes it to function and keep the body in the right uh, in the right in the right way. So if it is not taken care of well, then you are bound to die very soon or to be affected with many diseases because it is the first line of defense to the body for pathogens, for bacteria, and for other protozoan uh, factors uh, that uh, cause disease. Now, so I'm going to discuss it into detail how we need to keep our gut to make sure that we, uh, uh, we, we keep it well. Uh, now, before I go into this, I've just remembered is to understand the, uh, the anatomy and the structure and the, uh, and the, the, the way the structure is, is made. It has the muscles, the smooth muscles, the mucosal muscles uh, and the mucosa that is the inner side. So the smooth part where the full pass, that is the, the smooth, where the smooth muscles are, is always lined with the mucus lining, mucilage kind of slimy uh, liquid that helps to protect, uh, to protect the gut and we have also the, uh, the philia uh, and the flagellums that help the, uh, when there is dust or any particle are trapped and then can be coughed out or can be bound and taken to the colon and then released through the rectum. So 
when those uh, those modalities are not kept well, when the, uh, the, the mucus lining is not maintained, um, the bacteria within the gut is not maintained, and the hydration is not uh, maintained, the gut system is, fa is, uh, is faced with a problem of beginning to develop other diseases. So that is why we have this disease that is called achalasia. Achalasia is a rare disorder that makes it difficult for food and liquid to pass from the swallowing tube connecting your mouth and stomach in, uh, uh, into your stomach. Achalasia occurs when nerves in the esophagus become damaged. So there are nerves within the esophagus. Uh, and you know that the esophagus is not very long. It's about 20 centimeter long. Uh, and it is divided into three parts. As a result, the esophagus becomes paralyzed and dilated over time and eventually loses the ability to squeeze food down into the stomach. So uh, because of uh, the nervous damage, it means that if the nervous around this area, uh, the nerves that are connected to it, uh, maybe the, the teeth, uh, not really the T, the, the C, uh, uh, the cervical nerve number five and six are affected, your esophagus uh, system is going to be damaged. So that interaction between the muscle and the nerve, that connection is lost. So food then collects in the esophagus, sometimes fermenting and washing back into the mouth, which can taste bitter. Some become mis uh, some people mistake this for gastro gastroesophageal reflux disease. So you feel like uh, you feel like uh, there's some burning sensation. So this is a normal a normal gut, a normal esophagus, and this is affected one. You see, it is dilated and tortuous esophagus, narrow lower end at the sphincter the cardiac sphincter. So uh, when it is, it, is, it, is, it is dilated and maybe it is very stiff, it cannot contract and relax. The food is not being able to release into the stomach. And then the food begin fermenting and the fermentation process brings acidosis and uh, death of the cells within that area, and then you begin developing uh, the factors of uh, some, uh, some feelings of acid reflux. So what are the symptoms? Uh, it's usually uh, the symptoms of achalasia usually develop for most people between ages 25 and 60, but it can occur even in children. The onset of symptoms, some similar to those of reflux disease is gradual and it may take years to progress. This includes difficulty swallowing solid food, vomiting of an undigested food, chest pain, especially after meals, coughing, especially at night when lying down, difficult swallowing liquids, later in the illness, weight loss. Uh, so you see, because of that uh, death, death of the cells within the esophagus, uh, the body, normally speak by itself. If there is something that is injuring the system, the body will either remove it by vomiting or diarrhea and or coughing. Those are the ways that the body is trying to protect you. And uh, there are two main mechanisms by which this sphincter function. That is the uh, the, the cardiac sphincter. One is that it closes in response to the presence of acid in the stomach, and the other is nervous system control of the smooth muscle involved with this sphincter. So if there is a lower than normal amount of acid in the stomach, the sphincter will stay open. This presents a huge problem for people that are on acid reflux medication like proton pump inhibitors, because this reduce the amount of acid in the stomach will uh, cause the sphincter to stay open, which allows 
the acid to start eating away at the esophagus. So many people experience the hypoacidity, uh, low acid in the system, because this sphincter, the cardiac sphincter is made in such a way that when there is balance level of HCL about two uh, pH two, uh, the, the sphincter closes because naturally the body is set like that. But if it is lower, it opens. So when it is open, the food can gush back into, into your uh, into your esophagus and you will feel the burning sensation. So some of the times we feel this sensation, we have the low acid levels because we don't drink water. The best solution for this, number one, is to drink water. In the morning, the first thing you do, drink like two glasses of pure warm water. It helps to elevate the acid levels and then to no elevate and normalize the acid levels so that even when you are going to eat, uh, the, the, the food stuff that even remained in the sphincter, in the, in the, in the esophagus are going to be washed away. Are you seeing now the benefit of drinking warm water in the morning? Because if that food stays there for a long time, it is going to cause fermentation. And that fermentation is what is going to build up and develop a disease. Drink water in the morning. That's the first solution for any problem with the gut. Whether it is peptic ulcers, duodenal ulcers, drinking water achieves about 50% of the treatment because it normalizes the, the acid. And then it causes the sphincter to close so that there is no regurgitation. Yeah, then the next one we have is uh, benign esophageal tumors and cancer. And one of them is called leomyoma. It is the most common benign. Benign means that it is not uh, growing, or it, 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 it does not uh, profiliate or grow at an uh, abnormal rate. It's just a swelling, a swelling that is just there, but do not continually grow to injure other cells. So it may cause difficulty in swallowing and chest pain, but in most cases, there are no symptoms and it rarely bleeds as this tumor does in the stomach. It can be seen with a barium X-ray as a smooth round defect projecting from one wall of the esophagus. These tumors need to be removed only if they cause trouble such as difficult or pain with swallowing. So we have the, the leomyoma here. Are you seeing the swelling? It is just a swelling within the gut, but it is not protrusive. It does not protrude so much that it blocks the gut. But yet it is a tumor. It means internally there are those, uh, those, uh, those cancerous cells that are acting on the surrounding cells and affecting them. And <clears throat> with the time, what happens is that it may break up and bring a pass. And once it has broken and it, is, it becomes a wound, then it will be very difficult for you to deal with it. So uh, this disease uh, about Benin, uh, Benin uh, or uh, leomyoma is really not tough to deal with. By the way, the diseases of the gut are the easiest to deal with because the gut restores itself. The gut cells restore themselves within 21 days. So you need to be on a very proper diet that is going to restore the right mucus, the right bacteria, the right acids, and the right peptic, uh, uh, peptic juices or gastric juices, and then you are just done with the treatment. So uh, I'm going to, to discuss uh, on a general sense how to deal with all of this. The, the formulas are applicable to any disease of the gut. Now we go to squamous cell papillomas. They have 
front-like projections and develop at several sites in esophagus simultaneously. They rarely grow, grow large enough to produce problems with swallowing, except when associated with the tylosis, a hardening of the skin. These lesions are not considered precancerous. So you see that there are lesions. There are some, um, like some ruptures, ruptures openings, and and uh, uh, it may be things like pimples in the in the in the in the in the esophagus. So you see there, uh, you can see the the squamous cell papillomas, how in the vicinity, that protrusion the, the, where we have the two interjections, but they do not actually cause danger because they do not grow very fast. Sometimes they are caused as a result of uh, excitation of the cell around the gut, the, around the esophagus. Maybe you drank very hot water that has washed the, uh, has drained the mucus, and also kill the cells around that area, or you had swallowed very hard food that had caused abrasion in the area, or you had not been uh, drinking warm water constantly to wash the gut. So there's accumulation of food that has fermented and has caused pus uh, formation in the area. So there's a swelling. Uh, then we have fibrovascular polyps consists of a core of loose fibrous connective tissue, fat and blood vessels covered by a thick layer of squamous epithelium, the cells that line the esophagus. Such a polyps may become quite large with a very long stalk that permits to flop back and forth in the esophagus. Have you ever felt someone tells you, oh, I feel there is uh, the, the the parotid gland is very big. Some people like in the Luos, they call it limb. Uh, that, uh, that gland grows to an extent that when you swallow food, you feel something has been swallowed and it comes back again. That is what we are talking about. So people have actually regurgitated the free end of the polyp into the mouth in some cases, the regurgitation, the regurgitated polyp has caused sudden death by obstructive the ralnic. So if there is continuous overgrowth of these fibrovascular polyps or within the parotid gland, when there's that overgrowth, it can block the ralnics and so the air cannot go into your system. So it is so dangerous when it is allowed to overgrow. Most of the times, the doctors will cut it out. But there is no need of cutting it out. The, 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 the best way is to understand what causes it to grow, what causes it to overgrow. It is the fat foods that you eat. It is the, um, the high spiced foods. When so many people use these spiced foods, uh, spices made from, uh, in the, uh, from artificial, Food stuff that has aspartam and irritative uh, chemicals. Another problem that can cause, is, cause it is if you have imbalanced endocrine uh, hormones. Uh, for instance, if your adrenal glands are not functioning well, it can cause a flare into your system that is going to make most some of the hormones to be. Uh, higher, the levels of some hormones to be higher than others. And so they cause overgrowth of the glandular system. The glands like uh, maybe the thyroid, the parotid gland. And so it grows so much that it will cause the obstruction. Another thing uh, that we need to know, this is how it looks like. Uh, you see the polyps. Uh, how they overgrow uh, because of uh, uh, the unbalanced diet that causes hormonal imbalance and weaken the endocrine gland. Then we have the granular cell tumors that grow under the lining of the esophagus and usually don't protrude. Usually they are 
discovered incidentally during endoscopy and rarely cause symptoms. Although there have been occasional reports of difficult swallowing because of large tumors, in that case, they who love to be removed, there also have been rare reports of malignant granular cell tumors in the esophagus. So there is a danger of just removing them, but not sealing the cause. We need to understand the cause. The person need not to take uh, uh, the animal foods because uh, so this happens with the people who are feeding on, largely on white meat. There will be a lot of profiliation of, uh, of the cancerous tumors within the, the, the gut because of the high cholesterol and the hormonal factors that are related to meat products and animal, animal poultry products and animal products. So you see the blockage and the ulceration where the, the X is, it causes uh, that inflation of the cells around that area and it can swell and block your esophagus. And then we have this deadly disease that is esophageal cancer. It is the most common esophageal tumor. However, it's this uh, however, it's the squamous cell carcinoma. It means that it affects the organ. Carcinoma affects the organ. Melanoma affects the skin. And then we have lymphoma that affects the blood or the, the lymphatic system. Yeah, so we need to understand those uh, types of, of cancers. Then we have the lymphoma, you know, the, the leukemia that affects the blood. Yes, so amongst all those diseases, what among the cancers that we know, the ones that affect the gland, the glandular cancers are very dangerous and they are difficult to deal with. Like the esophageal cancer that affects the, uh, affect the, the parotid gland can really cause a difficulty in treatment unless it is identified on a, in a highly stage. So you see it, it grows aversively and blocks the, blocks the gut. Esophageal cancer is a cancer arising um, cancer arising from the esophagus, which is a food pipe, runs between the throat and the stomach. The two main subtypes of the disease are esophageal squamous cell carcinoma and esophageal adenocarcinoma. And uh, the ESCC is more common in developing countries, while ESC is more common in developed countries. So adenocarcinoma arises from the lower third of the esophagus where they usually have been transformed into intestinal cells types or a condition known as Barrett's esophagus. So why, what are the reasons or what causes this uh, esophageal disease or cancer? Alcohol, tobacco, very hot drinks. Remember we are admonished not to drink hot foods, neither drink and eat with our foods, neither eat very, uh, very hot food or very cold food because they, uh, they remove, they actually make the mucus lining to be phased off and also cause the death of the cells in the, in the gut. So just chewing betel nuts and poor diets. And I can also say chewing the gum, you know, the ordinary gum that we have that many people love eating, uh, tropical, or uh, I don't know how they call them outside there. There are many of the chewing gums. They will bring a problem with your gut. Not eating between meals. And also we need not to eat very spicy foods. The most common causes of adenocarcinoma type include obesity. That is because of the high acidity in the system as well as cholesterol levels. And then we have smoking and acid reflux. The acid reflux causes uh, this 
uh, type of, uh, of cancer because it will burn the cells surrounding stars and then they form a callus or a hard tissue as a process of tylosis, the hardening of the cells. And then when there is toxin or chemical that is hidden within that callus or that, uh, tyolo, uh, that, that hard skin, it begins to proliferate and develop into a tumor. So some of these less common types include squamous cell carcinomas that we have just discussed. So you see in stage zero, it begins as a, a small dot and then stage one, stage two, stage three, it begins to develop and also develop its root airs or blood vessels that feed it. And then in stage four, uh, stage four, it has almost fill the whole gut. And so no one can eat, no one can, can read. Now, you need to know that in this disease, the best way to handle it, once so the, the, this esophagus disease, is to uh, understand the principle that the esophagus operates, the pH of the mucus, the pH of the, the pH that the, the bacteria around the esophagus operate, and then develop uh, a salve, or you can develop uh, a mucilage that is going to brush off or shrink that tumor. And then you can either cough it out or it can be removed through the, uh, through the, uh, the large intestine. And you need to cleanse the body by doing the liver detox so that as it breaks, when it is broken internally into the blood, the liver can deal with it. But if it, it breaks and you cough it out, the better. So you can form a mucilage, for instance, a mucilage that is made, with, made of a, a comfrey mucilage. It means you'll blend the fresh comfrey root and just take that, uh, that uh, whitish mucilage, slimy part, concentrate it, you will sieve it. And you also add slippery air and then add clove oil, add also peppermint oil and a teaspoon of, uh, a teaspoon of, how do you call it? Menthol crystals and you add a, uh, like about two tablespoons of, uh, of, um, of uh, marshmallow root. Now that is a very perfect, a very perfect uh, de decoction and mucilage for feeding the cells within the gut from the mouth to the anal area. And as, it, as you swallow it, because it is thick, you will not be able to swallow it at first, but it will be trickling slowly, slowly as it goes slowly, it releases the medicinal properties. You can add even some, a few drops, uh, about, uh, about one tablespoon of DMSO so that as it goes into the system, it is able to release the medicinal properties and the mucilage in that component is going to feed the cells and then also uh, redevelop the mucus lining. And you can also do on the throat, you do that the same mucilage on the throat as a, as a salve. You just apply it on the area and cover with some clean towel and then leave it there for about six hours and change to another one. Uh, it is a very hectic process when the cancer has reached stage four. I had a, I had a one, one that was in stage, uh, stage three that almost, um, uh, getting to stage four. And what we did was we used clove oil. And when the clove oil was used for three days, the tumor dried out and then the person coughed it out. But we lost the patient at the ground of uh, low blood. So the patient was having low blood and it was at a crisis level that uh, uh, 
uh, the family was not able to run with him to the hospital, but the person who was not able to talk could now talk. The person who could not able to drink could now drink and eat. But just a period of two days, the patient was so weak that it was not impossible for him to live. But it is, uh, should the process be begun earlier on, the life of the patient will be saved. So you, you must understand that when you are doing this, make sure that the colon is cleansed, the liver is detoxified, the kidneys detoxified, give the patient a lot of water and also give the juices. If the patient is not able to, to eat at first, if you meet this severe condition, then make sure that you make the muesli that I've just said and put it on the throat, make a thick, a thick, a thick mucilage, and then let it stay there for as, as much as you can. It should not be, you should not let it go until the time you will hear the patient say that I am feeling there is some relief. Another thing you can do is to use uh, activated charcoal with the mucilage of uh, uh, mucilage of, of uh, comfrey and of slippery elm, and you add flaxseed into it, and then put a poultice around the neck 24 7 until the time that the, the tumor will be broken, broken out. Well, so that is how to deal with, with this condition of, of, of the esophagus cancer. And another thing is that we want to go through uh, is stomach problems. We have dyspepsia, the gastritis, duodenal and gastric ulcers, benign gastric tumors, stomach cancer, gastroparesis, and foreign body in the stomach. So in this group, all of them almost operate <clears throat> or manifest themselves uh, as in the, the, the root cause is just one, the destruction of the mus mucous membrane, as well as the death of the cells in those areas. So you need to understand how to heal the stomach. For example, this is the picture of a gastritis, inflammation of the stomach walls. And it's normally caused by either bacterial infection or taking antibiotics or if you eat food that, has, that are high in chlorine, and chlorine kills a lot of gut cells. That's why it, is, it should not be taken or drunk in water. We have old age, uh, stress, excessive alcohol intake, and um, other diseases like HIV and AIDS. Now gastritis, when it has developed for a long time, it may cause gut. Uh, gastroesophagus reflux disease, where the acid levels are high and they cause burning around the walls of the stomach. And sometimes there can be regurgitation uh, of the reflux. The, the, the sphincter, the cardiac sphincter will be weakened and it will try to, to get up. So uh, what you need to do is number one, you must get proper foods that can be able to cure your system and uh, follow the laws of health. Uh, you must make something that is going to soothe and detoxify the gut. For example, crump buck, ginger, and wild yam, marshmallow, and plantain. Those are good herbs for the gut. And massaging tincture of lobelia can be used externally into the area. Like you make a, a lobelia tincture, or if you have albizia tincture, or albizia, um, albizia extract, it can be a, for a, a, a decoction. You dip a cloth in it, in that, strong albizia decoction and then tie it on the affected area. If it is the stomach, you will tie it on the stomach region. 
as long as the person will will get uh, will get relief. You keep changing to make sure that uh, the potency is maintained. Lobelia is known to help the gut and the glandular system. It is a very it is called a thinking hub. The the time any time you drink it. You take it in, it is able to know what to do. You can also take red raspberry tea, uh, three cups a day, green juice, juice the fresh leaves of comfrey, red raspberry, ginger, alfalfa, stinging nettle, or parsley, and then take copper's leaf. In fact, wounds that are within the respiratory system, uh, the, the, the gut system heals very quickly. Within six days, the person should be beginning to feel relief because uh, the gut heals very fast. And more so, anything that can heal the wound on the surface is also able to heal the wound internally. So if it is uh, a tumor, you're going to make a decoction or a concoction made of cranberry, ginger, wildium, plantain, and burdock root, and then you add menthol crystals and add a mucilage. Make sure for any gut disease, add something that is slimy. If you cannot get the, 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 the comfrey root or marshmallow root, put jute mallow, something that is going to be very thick and soothes the area. And then you mix it with some with, the, with these herbs and then drink it slowly to feed and help in breaking the, the tumor within your system. You know that for people who are having ulcers, just drinking green juice daily helps to heal and cure your cancer, they, uh, to, to, to cure your duodenal or gastric ulcers very easily. And also following and obeying all the laws of health. Now, you have to chew the slippery L. Chew the back of slippery L or put two tablespoons in warm water. It will be very slippery, slimy. You drink it in. If you have aloe vera gel, you can mix slippery L with aloe vera gel. Uh, if you have aloe vera gel, one glass, add a tablespoon of slippery L and then drink it in it will be able to help soothe your, your system, as well as help in detoxifying the, the, the gut area. You need a deep tissue cleansing, whereas you're going to use mucus diet. This is where you purely take vegetable, or vegetable juices or vegetable salads, or fruit juices or fruit salads to help with cleaning the system. Uh, you don't take grains during this time. You don't take uh, proteins or legumes during this time. Just take the vegetables and fruit juices the first three days and do a colon cleanse using senna, bentonite clay, and uh, ginger, uh, ginger powder and uh, activated charcoal every day for the first three days to help cleanse your bowel. So the first thing in the morning upon rising, drink two glasses or more of prune juice or pineapple juice. If you have a problem with the gastroesophageal uh, reflux, what you do, you will pause on sour foods or sour fruits and take mild ones like cucumber, thorn melon or pepino melon or hamla to help soothe and strengthen your system. And then once the system is now able to accommodate the sour fruits and foods, you can begin taking them in. For instance, lemon or oranges to help build your system. Uh, the prune juice is Moso is not primarily to empty the bowels, which it will do, but rather to draw into the intestine from every part of the body such toxic matter or body waste as many as may be there and eliminate it through the bowels. So what prune juice does is that it 
taps, it taps every chemical or toxin within your, uh, within your, uh, within your gut, and then recollect it, and then it can be eliminated. If you don't have that, pineapple juice is good for that. Then 30 minutes later, drink a glass of plain water and then uh, one gallon of apple juice is to co be consumed each day for an average size adult or one on that about two tablespoons per kilo of your body. So breaking up the mucus during the juice cleanse generally causes constipation throughout the three days. So this is a, 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 a three day program for anyone with any disease within the gut. You will need to do a colon cleanse, one tablespoon senna powder, one tablespoon psyllium husk, one tablespoon bentonite clay, activated charcoal, ginger root powder, add to a glass of warm water, stir very fast, then drink immediately to clean your bowels. So you will repeat this detoxification for three consecutive days. It will be able to remove any uh, any debris or putrefied matter within your gut and clean your, your liver almost generally all your, clean, your, all your elimination channels will be cleansed. And then uh, on the fourth and subsequent days, we begin taking vegetable and fruit juices along with raw fruits and vegetables. Then follow the mucus diet as close as possible. Do not be concerned if you feel weak during or after this detoxification. Our bodies are using the energies for internal house cleansing. Some of the time, the person may undergo healing crisis. Healing crisis is where you may be excessively diarrhea or having headaches, constant headaches, constant fever, or even feeling very fatigued. If you're doing the right thing, you need to. Uh, maybe what you need to do when the patient is very weak is to give uh, an energy drink made of, made of porridge or you give uh, a banana, chia seed, a cup of banana, two tablespoons of chia seeds and a glass of uh, pineapple. You blend those together and you give the patient. It will give energy very fast. Then you do the three oil massage. I think we discussed it yesterday. Uh, the first two days, massage the patient with the castor oil. And then the second day, use olive oil. The third day, you use uh, castor, oil, uh, castor oil again, or you can use clove oil. And then the third day, use wheat jam oil or vitamin E. Just buy vitamin E capsules and then squeeze the, the gel into the ointment. It can be any oil you can find around and then do a massage. You need to have a herbal formula to restore the muscular walls. And that is marshmallow, slippery hair, comfrey root, lobelia, ginger, wild yam, plantain, red raspberry, alfalfa. Now, if you have all these herbs, you will add them in, uh, make a strong tea out of them, and then get, uh, get, uh, get aloe vera gel. So for a half a part of aloe vera gel, top up with a half a part of this decoction made from this, and then take that four times a day. It will, uh, this especially is good for the people having the esophagus cancer or any tumor within the gut, it will be able to drain it out and remove it. Especially the plantain and comfrey root and marshmallow are very effective for any gut related problem. You need a bone, flesh, tissue and a cartilage formula, something that is going to restore the, the nerves, going to restore the muscles, going to restore the flesh and the mucus lining. And that is comfrey roots and leaves, acacia leaves, or straws, horsetail, grass, or horseweed. You mix them together uh, and then drink about two cups a day to strengthen the bones, the tissues, and the flesh. Uh, the unique juices and salads like carrots and coconut, 
peers and feeds. This one helps to restore the right mineral balance in your system and also restore the gut wash. You need to drink cabbage or apply three or four layers of cabbage leaves over the abdomen area evening and, uh, and in place to be left on overnight. Drink also the juice between meals. That is when you are having gastritis or you have colorectal cancer or you have uh, uh, duodenal ulcers or cancers or if you have a problem with the esophagus uh, disease cancer, you put, you package a cabbage, you, you bruise them, you bruise the leaves of cabbage and then pack them here, three to four or even five layers and then tie. It will be able to draw any inflammation within the gut. So vegetables like cabbage, carrot, parsnips, winter squash are very good for your system. Another important uh, thing for your, uh, your system, your gut is papaya. The papaya is considered wonderful for digestive disturbances. The unripe fruit and abounds in the enzyme papain which diminishes as the fruit ripens until there is a relatively small amount in the completely ripened fruit. Papain can digest about 35 times its weight of lean meat and 300 times its weight in egg albumin. This is considered important because this heavy protein as well as those in beans, peas, nuts and lentils are often difficult to digest and purify more quickly in the digestive tract causing gas, bowel, mouth taste, full breath, constipation, sour stomach, and heartburn. So papaya is a known cure for the GIT problems. Uh, for instance, if someone is having the, the, the most troublous or esophageal cancer, what I will do is to make a strong concentrate of papaya. You take uh, like two cups of papaya, blend it up or crush it up. After crushing it, add it into DMSO. Uh, if you have one cup, you will add equal part, uh, uh, not equal part, but half part of, of, the, of the DMSO. So if you had two cups, you'll add one cup of DMSO. And then add a mucilage of comfrey root or marshmallow root or slippery elm and then give the person to drink that slowly by slowly throughout the day. Another method is to apply the poultice on the area. Now what papaya will do, because it can digest 35 times its waste, it is going to digest that uh, squamous region that has swollen. It's going to digest that tumor because, you know, the body, the flesh is made of the protein molecules. It is going to feed and digest on it and shrink it so that you are able to, uh, it is able to be relieved out of the system. So making that papaya concentrate is very helpful with dealing with any gut disease. Make sure it is papaya that has not, has not, um, has not ripened. In fact, the ones that are very white inside, even the seeds inside are very white. That is the best one to go for. It will be able to help you with any disease along your gut. You can juice it. If you can be able to juice it, just uh, cut it into small pieces. And after cutting, you will remove the outer side, the white part, the green part, and then uh, juice it and then drink it. So you can juice and add peppermint, menthol crystals, and some cayenne, and the mucilage of comfrey or slippery elm, and then take it slowly. It is going to do wonders for you. Or another thing is to boil it. You just cut it small pieces and boil it up, and then drink that, uh, that decoction every now and then. The last one is wormwood or artemisia. 
we have two types of Artemisia. We have the Artemisia annua and the mugwort type of Artemisia. All of them are useful in this condition. So it is used as a digestive tonic and is indeed one of the foremost application of, uh, of, of wormwood is above all a stomach medicine being useful for indigestion, gastric pain, Sorry for the network. Oh, I was just uh, ending up uh, trying to give us uh, how Artemisia is very good for, uh, for this, uh, any type of uh, disease within the gut. All those diseases I've mentioned and we've studied, very easy to deal with. Uh, we can make a general formula that has per pain, do the extraction of papain the way I told us using DMSO, and then add a decoction made from marshmallow root, slippery, slippery elm, comfrey, plantain, acacia leaf, and uh, pork root. Just add equal parts. If you choose four tablespoons of each, and then you make a strong decoction. I taught us here how to make seventh power decoction. And then after that, you are going to add it into your papain concentrate. The, the largest per percentage should be the papain concentrate. If you put two parts of the, 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 the gastric, the, the, the gut carbs, you must double the portion of the papain do about four parts. If you put two, do four of papain. If you put four of the gas carbs that I've just mentioned, put eight parts of papain, and then add a very thick mucilage. And then you drink it in, apply as a poultice, and follow other laws of health, of being in the sun, uh, drinking a lot of water, exercising, breathing in the open air and other, uh, in, and other, other protocols, and then you shall be healed. I just want to end and then we say thank you to the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this time that we may learn. Let your blessings continually be upon us. And thank you for being with us all these six uh, sessions. Let your blessing be upon us all that are listening to for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.